Good evening, folks. This is Bill Breeden, and uh, welcome to Constellation Tour number 50. Tonight we're going to look at the Constellation Horologium, or the Pendulum Clock, located in the Southern Celestial Hemisphere. Um, Horologium is best viewed between November and January. So we have our Stellarium simulation here set up for December the 25th, 2020, at about 20 minutes after 8 in the evening. And also with a 60 degree apparent field of view, or I'm sorry, true field of view, which is about what you see with the unaided eye when you look up toward the sky. And we also have it set up for a suburban location. Um, in the country of French Guiana because Horologium is too far south to see from North America. So we had to venture a little further south to get a look at it. So let's start by finding Horologium and seeing where it is in the sky. We're looking southeast on December the 25th and you can see Orion right here. You want to look for Orion. And you want to look for Rigel down here. And the other bright star you want to look for is way over here called Akernar, which is at the end of Eridanus the river. And the river runs all the way from Rigel down here to Akernar. And Horologium is one of the constellations that runs along the river. Um, the river does give you a signpost to a lot of other constellations, so I do like to use it. So let's have a look at the constellation lines. And you can see here's Orion. And we're going to look up a little higher, hold our head up a little higher. And we can see the river runs way out this way, curves back around, and finally comes and ends down here at the star Akernar or Alpha Eridani. And just about when it reaches the end of its journey here, it passes by the constellation horologium or the pendulum clock. So let's have a look at the mythical figures and see how it's depicted. Okay, here's Orion here. Here's Orion's belt. Here's Rigel. And then here we've got the river running way over to here, down around Fornax and Calum, and then finally ending here at Akronar. And you can see that from our viewing location, the pendulum clock is kind of wedged here um, next to the end of the river. It looks like it's, it's uh, indicated in this direction with the 12 o'clock here at the bottom of the clock, the pendulum down here. Very interesting. It's not a constellation I'm real familiar with, so I'm going to be getting familiar with it uh, tonight here right along with you. Well, let's have a look at the boundaries. And Horologium occupies all this area of sky here, um, wedged in between Calum the Chisel and Eridanus the River. This, this, all of this space right here and down through here to Akernar is Eridanus. So Horologium is this area right here. And it looks to me to be another area of the sky that's relatively empty. Um, similar to Calum, the chisel right next to it. So without further ado, let's go to a dark site. And let's see if we can find Horologium ourselves. Here's Orion, here's Rigel, Here's the river flowing all the way. You can see this, these stars flowing this way. And Calum is down here. We went over that already. And then the river finally winds around here and ends here. So Horologium is this, basically this very empty part of the sky right here. Now it looks like these two stars, these two faint stars indicate the clock itself. And then this long line is the pendulum ending here at this, this faint star. And that's, um, 
That star is Alpha Horologi. It's, mag it's a fourth magnitude star. Let's see. There's Zeta Horologi, and there's Mu Horologi. So, very obscure constellation. Now, let's see if we can find anything to look at within within the boundaries of Horologium. I don't have any double stars on my list or Messier objects or any notable deep sky objects in this part of the sky. So just what is there? Um, let's use our, let's use Stellarium as a star chart. Let's turn on our boundaries, our constellation name, and then let's go into sky and viewing options and go to deep sky objects and turn on our labels. There we go. And I've got them turned up a little bit above halfway as far as density goes. Because with Stellarium, you can vary the, the density of your labels. The labels are basically these the words. What is it? And the, mar the hints are the actual icons. And it, it makes sense to have them travel together. Because if you turn the labels off, then all you're getting is the symbols without what they are. And if you turn the hints off and slide the labels up, then you get all the, the names without the symbols. So it makes sense to slide these over together. It looks like at this level, we're only getting three objects in Horologium, and I think that's a good start. So... Let's start with this globular cluster, NGC 16, I'm sorry, NGC 1261. And look at it through the finder. And you can see the way Stellarium does its sensitivity. You get more detail depending on your magnification as well. So there, this is a globular cluster that actually looks like it has an image in Stellarium. This is a nice one. NGC 1261. Um, is 8.6 magnitude, located 53,500 light years from Earth. So this would be, this should be on my list. This is a nice one. Let's add it. NGC 1261. This is how I learn. I learn by doing, making notes. So this is a really nice one. Let's look at it through a, a higher power eyepiece, 13 millimeter Nagler. And then finally a nine millimeter Delight. That looks sweet. That's a good view. Okay, let's look at one of these other NGC objects that's that's highlighted here in Horologium on our star chart. NGC 1433. And this is a galaxy of 10th magnitude located 27 million light years away. And let's see, through the finder scope, it looks like you're just starting to see a hint of it. And again, it looks like Stellarium does have an image of it in its database. It's a pleasant surprise. Now let's back the power off to a, a 24 millimeter panoptic. That's a really nice view. So a 10th magnitude galaxy, NGC 1433 in Horologium. It looks like it was in the northern part of the constellation. That one's worth writing down too. And let's see, this galaxy here has a declination of minus 47 degrees. So you, you would have to get pretty far south. Let's do the math. It's 47 degrees uh, southern declination. So at high, what latitude would you have to get to to see that? Uh, 43? Is that right or 53? Because 43 is still pretty far north. I don't know, I'd have to do the math.
even if you did, even if it is visible from 43 degrees northern latitude, it would be right on the horizon, which wouldn't be ideal. Okay, let's try this other. Let's see, we have one more NGC object in Horologium to look at, and it's NGC 1512. It looks like we get a bonus galaxy. Uh, this is a magnitude 10 galaxy located 46 million light years away. And NGC 1512 does have an image in Stellarium. It looks like a small elliptical. So you're basically going to get a bright smudge. <clears throat> How about NGC 1510 right next to it? This one doesn't have an image in Stellarium. So all you get is the symbol for it. Well, that was quite a learning experience. So let's let's turn off our labels and markers. And let's turn off our constellation labels. And return more to a naked eye sky. And since we're down here in French Guiana, let's take a little time to just look at the sky. See if we recognize anything. Let's look east, and you'll see that Orion is rising almost sideways, completely sideways. That's crazy. Let's look a little bit northeast, see if we recognize anything. This looks like Auriga. It is. There's Capella. Let's turn our heads a little bit more and look due north. Let's see how the northern sky changes from a location this far south. There's Cassiopeia. The north star should be really low from here. I wonder if this is it. Yeah, there's the north star way down there, almost on the horizon. Here, let's see. Yeah, even from French Guiana, um, Polaris is still above the horizon and it, it never sets. So the whole sky still rotates counterclockwise. So this way around the North Star, although you're not going to get much, much to see below it because you're so close to the equator. That's fascinating. So let's look up a little higher, see if we recognize anything. There's the Pleiades, so this looks like Aldebaran. No, that's Murfac. Ooh, I'm way off. This is Aldebaran up here. Yeah, even the familiar northern sky is unfamiliar from a more southerly location. That is wild. And this looks like the Andromeda Galaxy right here, which means this is the Great Square of Pegasus. Yeah, because there's Alpha Andromeda or Alpha Rats. So this is Andromeda here in this area. And that puts the Andromeda galaxy there. Okay, let's look over toward the west and see what's setting. See if we recognize anything. This is kind of fun. So this is the great square of Pegasus. So this should be a familiar part of the sky. It's just it's turned a little differently. That's Pegasus. Interesting. Okay. Let's look up a little higher. And we've got Mars in the sky on December 25th, 2020. And you can see how high up it is. A little harder to recognize things from from down here. Let's cheat a little bit. Yeah, you can see that looking southwest, you're starting to see a lot more uh, constellations than we normally can. And they're actually pretty high up. Here's Akronar here, so this is Eridanus the River. Here's the pendulum clock that we just explored. 
So we're back to almost where we started. And you'll see in the south, we're getting all kinds of southern constellations that are all, all new to us here from the north. Okay, well, this concludes my tour of Horologium, the pendulum clock. Good night and good seeing.